Oh, 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 oh. It's Mr. Steel, your girl. It's Mr. Steel, your girl. y'all welcome back it's another video recap by your boy Corey and commish at we're taking it back backs like we did it in week one it was a blast we're gonna do it again but since then we've had some craziness in the league we've had intensity we've had drama we've had excitement this is the best this league has ever been and i couldn't be happier but it has been a while like i said since week one so let's get everyone caught up at what do you got all right first off let's address the elephant in the room aka the trump pence punishment as you recall Corey was the low score getter in week five so, being a low score getter, he had to post an embarrassing profile picture on Facebook. Now, knowing how much Corey loves Donald Trump, Travis threw out a suggestion of a Trump Pence bumper sticker for his profile pic. It was beautiful. True that. This has been the biggest scandal our league has seen yet. Maybe one of the biggest in fantasy sports history. When I think about it, I think about Barry Bonds with the drugs, Lance Armstrong doing some cheating. Wow, Corey, that's uh, pretty big. But yes, a truly savage move on Travis's part. And in the moments following Travis's suggestion, the league text thread was pure gold. Limbs were lost, blood was shed, and tears were flying everywhere. It was almost as if someone had lit a firecracker in the middle of an anthill, and all the ants were just scurrying around, wondering what had happened, desperately trying to make sense of things and rebuild their comfort zones. Travis is like Batman in the Dark Knight. Unfortunately, I have to admit it, he's the villain this league needs, and I couldn't be happier he's with us. I've always appreciated Travis's lack of hesitation to push buttons, and this was certainly no exception. Regardless of the situation, you have to admit that he's always fair with his harassment. He dishes it out consistently across the board and ultimately nothing is off limits and no one is safe. Oh yeah, it's been great. In other news, the old commish had to levy his first fines of the year. Now as we know, Mr. Steal Your Girl. It's Mr. Steal Your Girl. What was that? <laughs> But as we know, Mr. Steal Yo Girl conveniently forgot to post the poop head picture to his Facebook profile and therefore had to pay a hefty fine to the community fund. This may have started an unfortunate trend though because shortly thereafter, Sam dropped an empty roster slot for two weeks in a row plus a fine for the lowest points that week. And he didn't throw up that punishment pick in week six. All of which, Sam, are still unpaid. Anyway, my friends, it is time to get to the nitty gritty. We haven't done this since week one. So let's look at where the standings are now before we get into this week's matchups and action. Things are really getting interesting here as we approach the end of the regular season. The coveted playoff spots are under fierce competition and it's gonna be close for many people. The standings right now are as follows. In first place, we got your boy, seven and two, tied with Walsh at seven and two. Tanner and Jonah are both at six and three. Penn, Liam, Travis, and Brad are all at five and four. Christian is at four and five. Air is at two and seven. Corey is at two and seven. And Sam, a dismal one and eight. It's crazy. Sure is, Corey. There's a two-way tie for first, a two-way tie for second, and a four-way tie for third. And not to mention there's a three-way tie for the coveted dress spot. Yours truly, your boy Sam, and Air Boy. At this point, it's honestly impossible to call the final four playoff teams. And my guess is the last two spots will come down to a tiebreaker of who scored the most points this year. It's absolutely nuts. Yep, you called it. It's completely bonkers. Sure is. It's insane. Uh, okay, we, we get it. It's maddening. Please stop. It's pandemonium in the ring. Are you done? Yeah, yeah. Thank goodness. Now moving on to this week's matchups. All right, guys. First up, we got Melvin Milktoast Kamish versus King Travis, aka Serial Douche, a major douchebag of the league. Ooh, we dropped a double on him. You got that right. You know, I don't always score 170 points, but when I do, I prefer to do it against King Travis. You know, I was actually a bit worried going into this game because Travis has been strong, but little did I know my entire team would have their career best day. They really did. I mean, you laid the smack down this week. 
be taking on Travis. I mean, 170 to 111. That might be the highest amount of points any team has ever gotten in our league. Now, typically, King Travis starts a pretty solid team, but I don't think he did his research this week. I mean, he left some wide receivers on his bench that would have outscored his starting wide receivers. He had some hefty running back points and some major defensive points on his bench. I mean, Travis, this isn't typically your style, so get with it, man. You got to improve if you want to make the playoffs. Hey, Travis, sucks to suck. You know what that makes me think? That is definitely double douche stats of the week. I'm really hoping my team keeps this up, but if history is any indicator, I'll secure a disappointing finish in third place like I do every year. <laughs> That's right, Austin. Knowing you, I wouldn't be surprised if everyone on their team tore their ACL before a playoff. Everyone and their cats. It hurts because it's real life. <laughs> you know, it is pretty pretty real about Austin's ACLs. I mean, he's not getting any younger. His ACLs aren't getting any younger yet, even if they are fake. Too true. Oh. Yeah, what was that? There's a stinking dog barking outside. Oh, that's... I'm gonna kill that thing. That's it. Come here, you stupid mutt! And we're back. Sorry about that. All right, moving right along now. We got Tanner versus Liam. That's the next matchup this week, aka Dale Daleshire versus Spider 2Y Banana. Liam, get that team name changed for real, please. I hope you get last in this league. Knock so I can see you in a dress, but someone can change that team name for you. Anyways, on Monday, Tanner claimed that he would win the league, and we all had a pretty good laugh at that. And rightfully so, because his team's performance did not come up to that caliber, a championship caliber this past weekend. His team performance was so bad, even Rebecca Black would be embarrassed to be seen with him, especially on a Friday. It's Friday, Friday, gotta get down on Friday. Too true, Corey. This week, Liam really showed up, and he dropped a cool 130 points on Tanner for a 30-point smackdown on Tanner. You're right. I mean, it does appear that Liam's team is gelling at just the right time, and if he can string some more wins together, he might be in the running for a playoff spot. Should be interesting. We'll just have to see. But in case you forgot, Liam beat Tanner by 30. Tanner lost by 30. Now for our next matchup, we have Carney versus Jonah, aka Witten Mittens versus the Grateful Dreads. This matchup came down to Monday Night Football. I mean, Carney's entire team played on Sunday and he had a 30 point lead going into that Monday night. Jonah did have AJ Green waiting to play and we all know he could be a pretty big stud at times. Jonah really made a good run at it but at the end of the night Carney remained in the lead. A huge swing in the potential playoff race because Jonah was right on the verge of taking over a spot and he really needed the win. But alas he gets the dreaded loss. Get it? <laughs> Dreads. <laughs> But hey, if fantasy football doesn't work out for Jonah, he can always be a model. I mean, look at this blue steel. I'm too sexy for my shirt. Too sexy for my shirt. <laughs> what? Dang. I'm Jonah. Ow! Ow! Wow. <laughs> Well, if that isn't something right there, if puckered lips could kill. Yeah, we better just move on. So now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the turd of the week. <laughs> this week's fresh loaf is hot off the press, sponsored by the one and only Mike Walsh. Yeah, that's right, Austin. This week's turd of the week is for Mike and Mike alone. You know, I'm going to make this very clear. Austin and I both agree that Penn should not be lumped in like a piece of corn to what this gigantic turd was that Mike dropped on us all. So... Ken, sorry about that. Walsh, this is all on you. 72 points. 72 points. That's all Mike scored. To put this in perspective, if Mike and I were playing this week, I could have started my two running backs alone, and I still would have come away with the dub. Excuse me. You know what, Austin? That gives me a good idea. Let us take a look at how many points everyone scored this week and who scored how many and see just only how many players it took from everyone's team to beat Walsh's abysmal 72 points. Corey, five. Christian, five. Sam, five. Do you steal Jonah four Carney four boy team four Travis three air three Liam three ten humbling <laughs> tough to swallow down like stinky that is one big pile of sh but you know what, I do have to hand it to Walsh. I mean, he did man up, and just like that, he changed his profile pic. So, Walsh, very well done. Congrats on unclogging this week's toilet. All right, moving on. And up next, we have Christian versus Air, AKA the Goodell Bad and Ugly versus Team Harambe. But before we begin, can we please just take a second to appreciate what is quite possibly the best punishment picture of all time? Dang. That is down, right? Six ass. 
Christian and I were in the running for the turn of the week, but they each hit the century mark, so that allowed them to barely pinch on by. Now, they each had a decent showing, I guess, but at the end of the day, Air pulled off the win by six points. Christian has really had a rough go lately, and after starting the season fairly strong, he's lost two in a row and is losing sight of the playoffs as well. He needs a lot of people to lose, and he has to win out to even have a prayer. Truthfully, you could say that Christian's team name has been a great indication of how his season has gone. Get to hell, bad, ugly. And truthfully, so has Ayers. I mean, for quite some time, he was looking as a playoff hopeful. He has a strong team, but his uh, hopes and dreams have been shot. Boom! Straight to the dome! It's a deep burn. It's a deep, deep burn. But hey, at least he got to drag Christian through the trenches for a bit first. What do we have next for them, Corey? Well, Austin, that means one thing and one thing only. It is time for everyone's favorite moment of the week, the game of the week! That's right, Corey. This week's game of the week was between Corey and Sam, aka Mr. Steal Your Girl. It's Mr. Steal Your Girl. And Cotton Needs New Shorts. Was that Mr. Steal Your Girl? I just couldn't help myself. It's Mr. Steal Your Girl. But this one was one heck of a matchup, and Sam squeaked out a fart of a victory and beat Corey by 1.4 points. That's right, Austin. I suck. Philip Rivers, this goes directly to you. Eat, poop, and die. You ruined my week. It was Todd Gurley in week one, and now. Lucky you, you threw an interception right as the game was about to end, and that gave me negative two points, which dropped me to the loss, so thank you for that. Oh, did I mention that was the fourth interception of the game for Phillip? Terrible timing for an interception, Corey. Even worse, this was your second loss of the season by less than two points. Two points. <laughs> two games. Now, we will refer to this game for now as Sam versus Corey. However, I did hear a nasty rumor that Sam outsourced control of his team to one of his fraternity brothers. I have no idea if this is true, but I can imagine what this conversation may have looked like. Hey, bro. You wanna run my fantasy squad, bro? Yeah, bro. Awesome, bro. Yeah, bro. 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 That was pretty sweet. But despite what is shaping up to be another truly abysmal season for Sam, I'm also pretty proud of him for setting his lineup on a weekly basis. That's something big and that's something that we all wanted to see this season with everyone. So Sam, you've done a good job with that. And I actually went back and looked at the last couple of seasons, how many fines you would have needed to pay with today's current fines in place with the empty roster spots. And man, Sam, you would not be in school anymore. And it would have been a lot. I mean, you might have had so many fines that you would be able to pay off our nation's debt. And folks, that's in the trillions and it's not a joke. Unfortunately, it's true. This year though, he's only had one roster related fine. So you gotta commend him for that. Huge improvement on his part. Although this hasn't exactly translated to an improvement in his overall performance. He is still two and eight. But please let's not forget about me. I love the spotlight as much as every other loser in this league. And I think it's fair to say that I've done a great job at ruining my reputation as a fantasy champion. First to worst in the span of 12 months. 2016 is the Freaking worst, man. Deep breath, Corey. But yes, this game really doesn't honor the title game of the week. A more fitting title would probably be the 2016 Pampers Toilet Bowl. But I guess it all just depends on how you look at it. <laughs> really, at the end of the day, this was basically the equivalent of two old people fighting over the last lot at the graveyard. And with that, our fantasy recap is complete. Until next time, boys. We are! <laughs>